If you look at my bio, you might notice that I have been teaching at a couple of universities in the last 10 years. However, not in the last couple of years. Now, you might have also heard in your life someone saying that pursuing a PhD in architecture does not make much sense if you do not want to stay in the academia. I actually do not believe in that. There are many advantages of doing a PhD, especially if you basically add a whole entire field of expertise to your knowledge, like I did. That being said, it's still a bit of, sh of a shame to do a PhD and not to pursue an academic career at all, at least in parallel. So I did teach for a while and I did seriously consider staying on that path. I, I love dissecting and explaining things, research. I'm, I'm lo in love with research and exploring new ideas and concepts, inventing. And I already made a video talking about different layers of our work, one of which has to be teaching. But at the same time, I'm not going to pretend here we were all born yesterday. There are other not so innocent reasons why many people want to become professors. It is a fact that a lot of famous architects and engineers are simultaneously in charge of their offices and hold a professorship somewhere. And even though they do not really need the professor's paycheck, it gives them a certain credibility and prestige and helps them provide a lot of work for the office through connections that the university professor title and the position provides. It also helps them scout and hire some of the best students, often combine the strengths of their office and their academic position to apply for project grants, and the list goes on and on, and some of them might sincerely love uh, passing their knowledge to young students. I'm not bringing that into question at all. I'm just point uh, pointing out why the uh, competition for those positions might be pretty intense. And I do not want to talk about them, whoever they are. I'm here to talk about why I do not teach at a university, and so far I explained why I definitely should. Now, there are two reasons why I do not, though. First, they do not want me. Second, I do not want to anymore. Let's start with the they don't want me part. I applied to many academic positions in the recent years, to be honest, and the response was mostly miserable. <laughs> Aside from one or two nice examples, actually both coming from prestigious colleges in the US. My reasoning was, was this. People with my expertise in practice working on some of the world's most complex projects are pretty rare in the academia. And I thought that I, having the experience in both academic and professional world, could teach the students how to solve real-world problems with programming instead of teaching them how to generate pretty pictures and more often than not give terms like parametric design a bad name. Yet, I was somehow wrong. You see, the people with master's degrees and PhDs that aim at these positions like research assistant, teaching assistant and eventually professorship chairs are by far outnumbering the available positions. That's one of the problems of the modern educational system and the hyper-production of degrees, including the PhD one. So the competition is very fierce and that's completely okay. That's the least of my problems. That's actually not a problem at all. Well, except that the points I thought I have do not count in that competition. There are other points that count. For example, if you are someone that got their master's degree, then your PhD, then you work your way up the ladder being the research assistant, teaching assistant for maybe 10 or more years, you developed a lot of personal contacts and you can count on your professors helping you get a position once something frees up. Everything in the world works through personal connections. Everything I do works like that, outside of the academia as well. And if, you can, if I can teach you one thing from all of my experience, that, that would be it. So if you're someone that wants to just jump into that world from the outside, as a Quereinsteiger, as Germans would say, into a comfortable position, good luck. <laughs> then, there is the problem of publications. I spoke about this in many other videos, and the quality of publications is rarely considered. No one has time for that. You very well know that right now AI uh, algorithms can write publications that pass through conferences and, uh, and journals. But it is the number of publications that counts. And that can grow exponentially, especially if you already got to the level of a teaching assistant or even assistant professor. It almost becomes like a pyramid scheme. All the people beneath you start to put your name on their publications because they kind of have to. It's a common thing to do. And the number of your publications rises exponentially without you knowing what's happening in half of them. And the funniest thing about publications is that they are usually about hypothetical research. I wrote some during my PhD. It, it can be great and interesting and useful, but more often than not has, doesn't have much to do with the real world. 
I, on the other hand, worked on some of the world's most complex buildings. I had to make innovations constantly about how to generate single curved panels on a double curved surface, how to generate reinforcement on thousands of unique double curved panels, uh, optimize statically facade elements, etc., etc. A potential publication after a publication. And where are those publications? Well, copyright. I cannot write about anything what I do almost. Every contract tries to keep my mouth shut and hands tied for years. And if I really, really tried with a lot of struggle, I might manage to squeeze the allowance to do one or two a year. But I still would not be able to measure up with those in the academic machine who can produce five or 10 or 30 publications a year. You want another reason they do not want me? It's not only about publications. It's even more about you bringing the money to the university. So there are a lot of funds out there that finance different research projects. And as an academic, you will spend 70 or 80% of your time writing publications and applying for that money, which does not leave you a lot of time for teaching or research, but that's how it is. So if I manage to find work for my office in the real world, that doesn't really count for much. The university wants me to see uh, winning those funds and bringing money to the school which I completely understand. Of course, the school has to have money somehow, but I cannot do that as an outsider. So those are some of the reasons why they do not want me. And I understand them completely. I would probably behave the same in their shoes. Those are the rules of the game and I adapt. So I did want to teach at the university, but now I also do not want to do that anymore, which brings me to the second point. I made free plugins for Rhino, downloaded tens of thousands of times. Uh, I made Rhino development courses in C Sharp and C++ that are reaching people in the entire world. I even do mini lectures on my YouTube channel. Why then would I want to explain something in a dusty amphitheater to 20 or 30 people? Teaching offline is an outdated system and it is unbelievable that it still works. We will soon be witnessing the globalization of knowledge where on every topic there will be one or two video lecture series that are the best and that everyone will be following. And all other explanations will be obsolete and not needed. We will have less repetition. But that's maybe looking too far ahead. Right now, I would rather make a course online and share it. It would be nice to get paid by the university and do that uh, like many do. Many universities have their official channels where they uh, stream their lectures. But I personally do not need that. I can donate my time or try to sell the course. Nothing wrong with that. Now, as I said, I'm not going to hold back on the truth here as well. Students are also a mishmash of different personalities, and especially at the Faculty of Architecture, their interests wander throughout the enormous field of architecture, from art history, over city planning, interior design, and this spills over into journalism, film, you name it. So teaching programming and computational design at a school like that is not really fulfilling. You will work with just a handful of students that are really interested. So even though I love explaining things, I do not have the patience to teach if the students are not all in. And online, this is a completely different story. Only people that are really interested can tune in. So although there might be many other small reasons why I do not really want to teach at the university anymore, and those two are the main ones. Teaching online, I can reach a million times more people than teaching in a classroom. I love explaining, but teaching is not the same. Teaching involves patience and persistence that I'm not sure I have. So yes, the large majority of professors in architecture do not have a PhD, actually. A large majority of them got there by climbing up the academic ladder, publishing papers, applying for government funds and spending thousands of hours helping students with their projects and reviewing their work. I have to admit that not having so much experience with students not having that time spent with them is maybe a big downside in my CV as well. But at the same time, I'm not a falsely modest person. That's why I tell you that most of the times they cannot teach the students what I could to solve cutting edge real world problems with cutting edge techniques. But as I said, that is not what I'm doing for those two simple reasons. Uh, they do not want me and I do not not really want that anymore. So I decided that I cannot sit on two chairs. When I was 12, 13 years old and I was deciding if I'm going to be a professional pianist, I realized that I cannot commit to that, so I stopped playing the piano. Luckily, I restarted some years later, but I do it for myself. So that is how I will continue making videos, lectures, courses 
for myself because I love researching, dissecting, analyzing and eventually explaining. But will I do that at a university? Not likely. If I ever do, I will owe you an explanation. And if I ever do, be sure to demand one from me. Stay free.